Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doodly doodly do my <laughs> We are passing the Rubicon. Nobody can stop us now. Nobody can stop the direction of, I don't know, the energies. You know when Kanye West talks and he does the whole, what's it called, stream of consciousness? That's what the, that's where we are in the world right now, the stream of consciousness. And people like Elon Musk are taking us there. The Trumpian movement, whatever you want to call it, with or without Trump, Everybody's moving in a certain direction. You can feel it. And as soon as the election happened, there started to be collapses, both internal and external, right, on these different news stations. CNN has sort of gone to more of a panel discussion type thing where they just have liberals and conservatives argue for your entertainment. And, you know, it's still very slanted to the left, but. They're trying their best to say, hey, let's dial down the crazy because they've seen that that will not work over on Bill Maher. He's saying, hey, you guys need to dial down the crazy. Maybe we'll get to some of him in, in a bit with Neil deGrasse Tyson was one of the people where he criticized for being, you know, too woke on the gender stuff. So we're seeing some dialing back, but where you will not see dialing back is MSNBC types, and they have gone full insanity. And when Mika Brzezinski, you know, Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski, the married couple, he's Republican, she's Democrat, total lie, obviously. But their show, they went and met with Trump, and now their audience hates them. <laughs> you cannot speak to the president. Or else we will hate you. That's where it is over at MSNBC. That's where it always will be at MSNBC. And the problem with that is, is that it only has so long of a lifespan. So we can see here, Comcast is putting up MSNBC for sale. CNN just announced massive layoffs. Maybe they'll figure that out. But somebody said, hey, Elon Musk, I have a great... Uh, Donald Trump Jr., not just somebody, says, Hey, Elon Musk, I have the funniest idea ever. Elon Musk replies with, How much does it cost? And that is buying MSNBC. And we got all the names commenting here. Michael Knowles, now friend of the show. If you guys need a replacement for Rachel Maddow, I know a guy because he looks like her or she looks like him. Tim Poole says Alex Jones hosting would be the most entertaining outcome. And people then pointed out the last time Elon Musk asked how much a platform cost. It was Twitter. He said, I love Twitter. Uh, Ginger guy said, you should buy it then. Sorry, Dave Smith. I'm not sure who you are. And then Elon Musk said, how much is it? And then he bought Twitter. Now X. Will he buy MSXBC? Will that be it? Um, and then Alex Jones floated the idea. He said, Elon is openly entertaining this idea. What do you think? Musk hints at buying both InfoWars and MSNBC in a viral post. Elon Musk um, said the collapse of the network may result in him buying both. Putting Alex Jones on a show on a network that, was, that they are literally going to call MSNBC would be the final you know, nail in the coffin for legacy media. If I don't know what channel MSNBC is in, in your jurisdiction, I think it's 17 here. I haven't had regular cable in millennia, but if you flick on channel 17, 
basic cable or whatever the first thing over like you know you get the the bunny rabbits you get six channels or whatever how many it is and then the very basic cable you flick that on and Alex Jones is talking to you that's just something that no one could have ever seen coming six or seven years ago when they were deplatforming him everywhere so that was you know this is what we're dealing with now and so when we are still in this phase where somebody, you know, we're coming out of it, but we're still in this phase where somebody does a meme of Rachel Maddow here, and we still get people saying this has been digitally altered. While some people might know this, many people in the comments don't. Uh, this is from 2018. So this is a clip of Rachel Maddow crying, I think possibly, um, you know, Trump related, but I don't know, and attaching oh. it to a meme about Elon. <laughs> To at least three oh. Can we put up the graphic of this <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to hand this off yeah sorry that does it for us tonight we'll see you again tomorrow no oh. I don't know what that was for but basically she shows a meme there's a Chiron at the bottom says Elon Musk po Elon Musk post dangerous meme and that's uh what's making her cry people can't decipher this for some reason on their own but this is where we are we are moving past the fake news era and it's sort of like the memes of one and the memes always win and it's important to go back and look at and think about how the memes of one because all they ever had and by they I mean the news networks and the powers that be all they ever had was lying and hoping you don't look into it. If you go back to all the way to 2016 with the okay sign and uh, Pepe, the frog, these were all random things that people set put on 4chan or 8chan or something and said, wouldn't it be funny if we got them to freak out about this? They did though said those are white supremacist things uh, being what white is okay. Is that what the sign said? Uh, it's okay to be white. That became a white supremacist thing. So anything that people threw out and said, hey, wouldn't it be funny if the mainstream media falls for it every time because it's too easy for them? They don't have a sense of humor. You know, Tony Hinchcliffe, Tony Hinchcliffe is a racist, you know, hate monger. And there, this wasn't a joke at the Trump rally at MSG. They don't have any sense of humor. They don't understand why people can joke around about their serious topics. And, you know, some people who are career grifters, like the people at Morning Joe, they say, hey, our time is quickly coming to an end here. MSNBC is going to be going up for sale. I need to go and ask President Trump to spare us from the day, the theoretical day of reckoning, the nonviolent will put out their day of reckoning, and then their audience hates them for that. And you see all these other guys, I think, Kyle Kalinske, who is, you know, a rat-like individual. The other guys, um, I, I'm forgetting their names. Uh, Kyle Kalinske, I think, is the one who dyed his hair blonde. Um, the Destys, all these guys, they've realized that their whole narrative thing of you being stupid and them being geniuses, just like they do at MSNBC, it, it, it's bleeding viewers, it's bleeding followers, and hey, this is not uh, this is not the most watched podcast in the Western Hemisphere, but at least we can be sleeping soundly at night knowing that we're not going on there and being like huge wieners and cucks and everything. These other people cannot say that. So when Mika Brzezinski and, and Morning Joe go out and, and they realize the writing's on the wall, their audience hates them even more because they're just like, you guys lied to us for years and now you're abandoning us. And this will continue to happen. CNN will all of a sudden change its tone. These other places will start changing their tone. And then it's like, why? Why did you change your tone when you told us you were right all this time? Didn't you tell us Trump was a fascist that was going to kill us this whole time? And now you're saying, hey, it's not. And we we showed this on the show last week with Mika, Briz or not, Mika's just on my mind, um, with Corrine Jean-Pierre, Jean how she said, no longer do we think Trump's, you know, Hitler. He's actually, things have changed is the newest thing she said. Let's see if we can find that. Corrine Jean-Pierre. saying things have changed now that um no we get something completely different for kareen let me show you guys this 
I don't know who Karina is. Let's go with White House. Things have changed. No, a lot of uh, K-pop is what comes up here. What's just the latest with Kareem jean Pierre? The vice president has taken time off uh, to go spend time with her family. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think she deserves some time uh, to be <laughs> with her family. So she's just taking time off in the last few months of the presidency. So that's interesting. But we're, we're seeing this crossover and we're seeing people have basically made up their minds about the future. And I'd like to parlay that into, you know, what's happening here in Canada. And that is Justin Trudeau seeing the writing on the wall. He's doing all these different things. So we talked about last week how, or maybe we didn't, but he said that he's going to reduce immigration numbers. It's all anybody can talk about. We talked about the immigration platform for the People's Party in Canada and how the Conservative Party hasn't really talked about it at all. So now Justin Trudeau has come out and said, we're going to lower immigration, you know, all the way down to 365,000 people over the next three years, which of course is still more than they took in pre COVID. And then they put it up to like 2 million in two years. Now we're going to dial it back slowly to, you know, only almost double what it used to be. And you should be happy, but he's doing more moves. He's making more million dollar moves as they say in desperation about tr in trying not to get uh trying not to lose the next election. So he made an announcement of temporary tax relief between December and February. The past few years have been challenging. It feels like the price of everything has gone up and while inflation is cooling and interest rates are dropping, we know that Canadians aren't feeling that in their household budgets just yet. So what they told you before was everything's awesome. And and it's not unaffordable. Actually, our economy is doing quite well. This is what they've said all along. And they say it feels like the pr price of everything has gone up. And while inflation is and while we're still doing a good job, even though the inflation and the prices are all our fault, even though we're doing such a great job, we know you aren't feeling it. Why would we not be feeling it? Tell me that. Our government can't set prices at the checkout, but we can give Canadians more money in their pocket to help them afford the things they need and save for the things they want. Which, of course, we'll get to in a second. That doesn't make any sense. Starting December 14th, we're giving a tax break to all Canadians. With GST and HST exemption across the country, Canadians will be able to buy essentials like groceries, snacks, and kids' clothing all tax-free. So this tax break will apply to prepared foods, including vegetable trays, prepaid meals and salads and sandwiches, restaurant meals, whether dine-in, takeout, snacks, including chips, candy, granola bar, beer, wine, cider, alcohol, children's clothing, footwear, cars and seats and diapers, children's toys, games, video game consoles, books, print newspapers and puzzles for all ages, and Christmas trees. So, working Canadians will also get some cash back with a new working Canadians rebate. Canadians who worked in 2023 and earned up to 150,000 will do will see a $250 check. So all this means is that we've taken and, and we've talked about this before. We've taken so much money from you and now that you're complaining we can afford to give it back. That's what they're saying. So the HST for those of you who don't know is called harmonized sales tax. And what it meant to do, what it was meant to do was put a different tax on things like food. So that you didn't pay the other taxes. So it was a tax meant to save you taxes, right? And now they're saying, actually, our tax isn't saving you money. So we're going to take it away, but only for a little bit. We're going to take away taxes for two months and give you $250. And what is it they said here? We our government can't set prices at the checkout, but we can give Canadians more money in their pockets. And why this is insane is because they could just not take the money from your pockets in the first place. If the HST isn't required, take it away completely. If the GST isn't required on these things and you think it'll save money, just take it away completely. Why do we need 
to have this tax at all if you admit that not having this tax will save us money. They're saying, let us take this money from you, and when we feel like it, we will give it back to you. $250. So, assumedly, if $250 back to, you know, however many Canadians um, making under... This will give 18.7 million Canadians, it says, that extra help. So, if, you know, basically half the country, you can give $250 to them, which we will calculate for you in a second... That means you can afford to not take it in the first place. Or, and you know, this isn't better. If you can't afford to give away $250 to 18 million people, then they're just putting us in further debt to make it worse along the line. Either you can afford to give it back to us, and so don't get take it from us in the first place, or you can't afford to give it back to us, and you're giving it to us will, and putting us further in debt, which will screw us over in the long run. Either way, it's insanity at work. Either way, it shows incompetence. Don't take my, Try not taking my money, Justin Trudeau. Try not taking my money in the first place and then trying me that I sh- and telling me that I should be so grateful when you give a little bit of it back to me. We're going to take... How much is 18.7 million times 250? Let's find out together. 18 million, 700,000 times 250. That is $4.675 billion. So they can afford to give back $4.6 billion to the taxpayer. Which means either they, they shouldn't have taken that $4.5 billion from us in the first place. Or they are, you know, bleeding us another $4.6 million billion in the hole. And it's going to screw us in the long run and cause more inflation. Which is it, Justin Trudeau? Can you afford not to take our money? Or are you screwing us over again by printing money? They already say that the the top inflation is bad, pretending as if they they haven't been in power for nine years. And then they say you're not actually feeling that it's going down. They cause the inflation. They're saying they're the ones causing it going down, even though it's cumulative, right? If you raise inflation by 5%, though, those prices are still going to be there. And if inflation goes down to 1%, the prices don't just go back down. It accumulates, right? So they can say that all they want unless they have some sort of negative inflation. It's all their fault. All the price increases are their fault. And they're saying, hey, you know, we hear your complaints. We're going to, you know, cut immigration a little bit, but not not to the lengths that we should or to the lengths that it used to be. And, hey, we're going to give a little bit of money back which we could have just not given taken for you in the first place. We're going to cut taxes a little bit for a bit for two months. We're going to let you live without us stealing your money for two months. And then, you know, after you've gone into debt on your credit card because you're saying, Hey, I'm saving 8%. Then the tax will come back. So go and, you know, spend a lot of money on prepared foods, please. Because we all know those are cheap, right? When you get the prepared salads that are eight ninety nine, we all know those are cheap. But you'll save a little tax on that. Go buy some beer. <laughs> go buy some beer and some video games without some tax on it. And everything will be fine. Here's $250. Shut up. This is what Justin Trudeau is doing. Here, let's watch the video of him talking about immigration, shall we? Immigration. Let's talk about it. In the last two years, our population has grown really fast, like baby boom. Fast. It didn't grow very fast. They brought in these people very fast. Increasingly, bad actors like fake colleges and big chain corporations have been exploiting our immigration system for their own interests. So we created these rules, we brought all these people in, and it's the school's fault. They're, he says they're exploiting it. We created these rules, these schools followed our rules that were shit and we put in place, and it's their fault. He throws everyone under the bus for following his own rules. Everybody's wrong but him. So we're doing something major. We're reducing the numbers of immigrants that will come to Canada for the next three years. Today, I'm going to let you in on what happened, where we made some mistakes, and why we're taking this big turn. So if you watch the full video, which you cannot without vomiting, he says they didn't 
factor in the temporary work visas and the student visas into their immigration plan, which of course means either you're a moron or you're insane. To, to, to not realize that the number of people you're bringing in through regular immigration and the number of people you're bringing in through temporary work visas and student visas, to not factor those into how many people will be here either makes you a moron or a liar. So there's no bo no two ways about that. And now he says the population's... Exp we have no idea how the population got here. We have no idea how it exploded so much. So we're going to, you know, just for you, we're going to bring it down. Do you see what they do here about everything? They take and they take and they take. They make p terrible decisions. And when they're proven wrong, when their system and their legislation and their ideas fail, they say, hey... It wasn't our fault that we failed, but we got to change it. They admit no fault, but also at the same time say it needs to change somehow. Here's a little bit of money. Here's a little bit of what you actually want, but we're not going to do that, but vote for us. And, you know, I'm a huge critic of Pierre Polyev, but here he is on CP24, and you can see that it's starting to creep in. I mentioned last week that with the People's Party, People's Party, immigration platform it's going to start seeping into the vernacular of the conservatives because they'll see this is what ac people actually want so you know when trudeau announced he was reducing the immigration pierre sort of said finally trudeau's doing something about it so he let him say it first which is smart but dishonest he said finally trudeau's saying something and now we see with this appearance on cp24 it's very calculated it's very robotic he is now starting to mention immigration a bit more, and this encompasses why I don't really trust the party, because they're so calculated in what they will talk about. They're not willing to give their own real opinions, ever. It has to be based on polling and, and you know, sentiments and, and in-depth research, so they're always like six months behind. Probably even longer than that. But here he is actually mentioning it, albeit very slightly, on a channel called CP24. I, I wonder what message you're sending to Canadians, Mr. Polyev, when you say you're all about axing the tax, you're all about bringing taxes down, making life more affordable, and in the same breath you say you're not sure you're going to support a tax break uh, for Canadians at a time when they're struggling so badly. Why, why are they struggling so badly? It's been nine years that Trudeau's promised to make them better off. And here we are, you're right, they are struggling so badly. And I think I, may I point out that he sounds like Jordan Peterson a bit here looks like him a bit <laughs> your own words are a condemnation of his track record uh, with their food prices rising 37 percent faster in Canada than they have in the United States just as the carbon tax came and housing costs doubled here we are in Toronto where it takes you have to earn well over two hundred thousand dollars to afford a home that was never the case before Justin Trudeau uh, ran money printing and immigration out of control before he built up all these bureaucracies that block home building. Clearly, Canadians are struggling. Justin Trudeau is the problem. He's not the solution. What we need is a common sense plan for permanent ta tax cut. So he's very, very right there. And if you think about that question from what I can only assume is a liberal, liberal operative at this network, she says, why would you be against his tax cut? It cuts HST for two months. The, people aren't this stupid. This is the problem with this. Either this girl is terrible at her job and she's the stupid and she doesn't know more than what she's saying or she wants to lie to people. She wants to cover for the Liberal Party. Neither one is good. If you have a person on a big network like CP24 like that and you're asking, why would you be against two months of tax breaks? Isn't that amazing? Forget about the rest of the stuff that he's done in the last nine years. Why? How could you be against him temporarily lowering taxes to make himself look good? How could you be against this? How could you be against Justin Trudeau being like, all right, I know the last nine years have sucked, but we're going to give you a little break. Here's a tax break in $250. How can you be against that? You're, you say you're for tax breaks. It's like she thinks that nobody can see that this is a political ploy ahead of an election for Justin Trudeau try to trying to garner more votes. Why would he add in video games to try to get young people to vote for him? Why would he add in booze? Do you you're promoting people buying booze? That's the that's the that's the great thing. Booze and video games. Now, who doesn't love booze and video games?
Should we be promoting that and pr providing tax breaks for that specifically? Or should we just have lower taxes overall permanently? If he was to, it doesn't make any sense for him in year nine to say, okay, now taxes are too high. Now immigration is too high. Now that my poll, I'm a tanking in the polls and election is coming up, you would have to assume that people are too stupid to understand what's going on. So is the host on this program just bad at her job or does she assume that her viewers are too stupid? You tell me. I can't, I don't know this woman, but you get one clip of her and that just, you know, first impressions are everything. And my first impression there is you must think your viewers are stupid or you are bad at your job. Why would this, why would you be against the, the country patronizingly giving you $250 and say, good job, everybody, $6 billion. We, we can just get rid of that at any point. God, God help us. You might say. Now, I want to move on over to the House Oversight Committee video. And there's a lot to lot to discuss here because, you know, you're going to want to say bald women. But we've looked this up. We've seen that this woman named Ayanna Presley has, a, I believe it's alopecia that makes her lose hair. So we're not going to make fun of her for that. But what we are going to make fun of her for is her rhetoric. We're going to make fun of her for say, for inciting Martin Luther King as somebody that white people are not allowed to reference. So here we go. This is, uh, you know, uh, an oversight committee. We're going to see Democrat Ayanna Presley here go on a rant about how somebody else dares to cite Martin Luther King Jr. And I'd also just like to pick, take a personal note of privilege to say, please keep Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s name out of your mouths. Yes. Your perversion of... Yes, please, please, sister. <laughs> Tell that white man he can't cite a black man. His words and his mission when his children have asked you to stop invoking his name and perverting his work when he was a proud and unapologetic black man fighting for equality for black Americans and all marginalized people. So you all are entitled to your opinions but not a denial of the facts. But I'm not surprised that you would deny American history. Don't you love how it's like, this is my impassioned rant. This is my amazing, you know, Martin Luther King inspired, you know, fighting against oppression rant. And then she immediately has to go down to her notes. I believe, turn, let me turn that page. I believe that you are doing wrong against our people, fellow congressmen. Let me lick my thumb and turn to the next page. I feel so sincerely, you know, this is something that's not meant to be seen. This is meant to have it written about in news articles. It's actually insane. I'm so impassioned that I have to read a script. A colleague across the aisle invoked the phrase of, we must do everything to stop government-sponsored oppression. Well, I've just enumerated numerous examples. Which is exactly why we have legislation and an executive order to reverse this harm. She's and talking about DEI, by the way. She's talking about reversing DEI programs, which are inherently racist. But she can't say what it is. If she says what it is, and this is what always happens. If a progressive says what they're doing, then you will see that it's stupid. If you point out what they're doing, they say that you're being hateful and, you know, putting their lives in danger. She's talking about DEI programs which prefer people by race and hire and reward people based on their skin color or their sexuality. And she says that is stopping that is what is actually hateful. And that is why I'm committed to opposing this bill and urge my colleagues to do the same. I thank Jefferson. my colleague, and I appreciate my Democrat colleague for exemplifying exactly the kind of oppression of freedoms that we're referencing. How about we'll quote whoever we want to quote? How about that's my First Amendment right? That's exactly the kind of baked-in oppression. Like, how dare... A white Republican, <laughs> quote, Martin Luther King. We actually had a congressman say that just now in his committee. 
Well, th and th thank you, good lady, for once again exemplifying the type of oppression that we stand against. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. Order, order, Mr. Higgins has the flow. This is a Louisiana guy, though, Higgins, by the way. If you're wondering about his accent and why he sounds like he's going to take you on a fan boat, <laughs> it's because he's from Louisiana. Or and we, and we will quote who we please to quote. A disgrace. And we will continue to speak freely because now I'm a veteran. That's the country that I serve. That's a constitution I sworn allegiance to. And that, that oath has no expiration date. I will fight for it with my last life's blood. For my right to speak freely and yours, good lady. You will never hear me saying, how dare you quote anybody you, you please to quote. And that exemplifies America precisely the type of institutional oppression that my colleague, Mr. Clouds, built, which I'm an original co-sponsor, hopes to push back against. Obviously, he's right here, and it's becoming more and more clear that people aren't standing for this sort of thing. She'll sit there, Ayanna Presley, who is an MSNBC frequent guest and progressive, and say... How dare you quote Martin Luther King? Now, the interesting thing about that is not only is she a crazy progressive who who says, you know, seemingly you shouldn't be quoting this person because, you know, he's fighting against oppression and you're promoting oppression somehow by not allowing us to pick people based on their race and gender. You're supporting oppression. Hmm. That's an interesting one. But. Another interesting point is that progressives don't like Martin Luther King. The further edges, um, you know, don't really, they don't really believe in what Martin Luther King said in the, in, in the idea that it's not exactly what he was actually for. You know, Martin Luther King is not liked by progressives because he didn't go far enough. And Martin Luther King is not liked by most, most conservatives because it was, it was basically like, a, t a TV show, what was going on there. You know, and the people that Martin Luther King saddled up with weren't exactly the nicest people. Go check out a John friend of the show, John Doyle's video about that. But progressives don't like Martin Luther King because, you know, he didn't recognize the hatred and the inequalities. You know, Martin Luther King's whole bit, of course, was equality between the races. So it, in progressive words, and it's very interesting that she would say this because she's a phony, Progressives want revenge. They want to right past wrongs with their own form of oppression. That's what DEI is. Saying that, you know, people of color, which just means non-whites, of course, anyone who's not white, need to be given an advantage to make up for past historical wrongs as they see fit. So in order to make up for things, you know, uh, provide reparations in a sense, we need to favor people who aren't white in institutions by giving them pre preferential treatment in jobs, promotions, etc. That is the progressive view on how to deal with race politics. That's not as far left as Martin Luther King. His was just, let's just be equal moving forward, which is what most people agree with. But then you've got the other view on the other side, which is, well, and, and it's not just really a view, it's just accurate history, that Martin Luther King, you know, he began getting in with black identitarianisms, including people who called for to kill white people. That's also in there. You will see if you watch that John Doyle video that there are women and movements who called for violent uprisings, race-based riots, of course. But people kind of don't want to remember that or reveal that or whichever word you want to use because they want to focus on him talking about equality. Now, wherever you stand on that, that does not equal Ayanna Presley being honest because, you know, real progressives that she cozies up to and that, you know, this is this is not just me being like, oh, the, you're guilty by association. She she goes on MSNBC. She says these things in other forums. She says that she's pro, you know, in the same sentence here. I'm not extrapolating at all here. That's what I'm trying to say. She says in this 
that DEI programs need to be enforced, but at the same time, how dare you quote Martin Luther King, who just said equality, not make these things mandatory the other way. So that's the that's the things that people have been fighting against for fighting against for the last few years, and nobody's really buying it anymore. So people who may have been afraid, especially up here in Canada with conservatives, af still afraid to fight back on this stuff. Now people are starting to say, "I'm going to say whatever I want because we are actually winning, and your ideas are losing." And when these progressives like Justin Trudeau like MSNBC, like Ayanna Pressley, when they're losing, they can't say, you know what, our, our ideas didn't go over well. Um, maybe I was wrong. Maybe this isn't the way to do things. They doubled down. And, you know, in some ways, that's the right thing to do if you truly believe in what you're doing. But at some point, you kind of have to pr prove yourself right. You kind of have to be, you know, ha have it. you kind of have to have some evidence to what you were saying that it works or that a lot of people agree with you. When it doesn't work and a lot of people don't agree with you and your movement isn't growing, it's kind of a sign that your ideas are pretty bad. You know, uh, a lot of right-wing and conservative ideas and movements are growing and more people are coming into that side. You saw how many people voted for Trump and how it was a much you know, bigger victory than everyone expected. And you're just like, okay, maybe there's some credence to this because more people are joining this. But fewer people are joining these progressives and they're recognizing their audiences are leaving them after believing them for years. And their thinking is not that I'm wrong. It's let us continue to be crazy. And can you blame them? I mean, if you're that crazy and your ideas are this crazy, do you think that pe being wrong is going to, to waver their opinions? Probably not. So maybe in a way that this, this segment is saying, Hey, I am a Presley, even though what you're saying here. You know, contradicts itself. You keep pushing those crazy pills. Rachel Maddow, keep pushing those crazy pills and maybe it'll work for you and maybe it'll just end up with Elon Musk and Alex Jones running your network. Hey, maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe that was the 5D chess they were playing. Maybe they were thinking, what if we get our network bought out? Then we can say we are being oppressed. I don't know, but that's just what I think. Let's wrap up with some fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I mean stupid stuff. Um, if you remember uh, WrestleGate, which is my personal magnum opus, where I made a tweet uh, based on what I heard about wrestling. Let's go ahead and find that, shouldn't we? We should. Um, I made a tweet about wrestling. Can't we? I thought we could search someone's tweets on Twitter. So this is the tweet that broke the wrestling world for whatever reason. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, broke the wrestling world, caused people to, you know, send me death threats, call me a piece of garbage. Even, uh, you know, a guy wrote a Reddit post about me that was hilariously untrue, but, uh, we don't want to address that directly. I, I, <laughs> I said that the guy was a good guy. I tweeted that the guy was a good guy and they're like, it confirms everything. Everything must be true. But, uh, I'm going to say 99% of it wasn't true. So, um, and basically what I was had been saying since then is because I had enough of this. One of my friends is a big AEW fan. I had enough of seeing AEW, this wrestling, you know, WWE is the big one. AEW is the second biggest one in, you know, as far as I know. And I started saying this. They, they, they said, how dare you comment on wrestling? You know, if you don't like what I'm saying, just ignore me. But they said, you never talk about it. But I, I'm a sports writer. And I said, you know, this stuff that they're pushing out and they were doing a new TV deal at the time and, and there were negotiations going on. And I was thinking, you know, this is a company that speaks to young children and they're putting you know, trash after trash after trash. They've got a guy who believes he's a woman and they treat him as if he's a woman. And it's not a bit or anything. They treat this guy who he thinks he's a trans woman as a, as a woman, it's not a bit. They just act like, yes, he's a woman. We accept that. No mention of it required. You have their one of their biggest wrestlers, Cody Rhodes, taking pictures with trans flags. And I'm just like, this isn't right. This is insane. And, you know, every few weeks I see a thing from AEW where they're talking about, where they're promoting something stupid, right? They're doing something stupid. And, yes, of course, the WWE will do stupid things too. But here they are. 
showing this kid, and I don't want to get copyright strikes, so we'll just see if we can get the audio in here. They're showing the, the Costco kid here in the ring from this family of obese kids, and I'm just like, what are you guys doing here? You, you bring this obese kid, and, and I feel bad for the kid, and I don't even want to name him because it's not his fault, it's his parents' fault. You bring in this obese kid, and celebrate him and have him par be part of your one of your matches. And it's like, what are you doing here? How many ways can you damage children through wrestling? Bre teaching kids that it's okay for a man to pretend that he's a woman and, and beat up other women, albeit predetermined. It's still the lesson here. If you're a child, you probably believe a lot of this stuff is real. And the physicality of it is real, of course. You can't fake being hit with a chair you can't fake falling from 20 feet so you're teaching kids that say if you say you're a woman it's fine we will treat you as one insanity and now you're saying if you get popular from tiktok being a fatty being obese that's also awesome we will reward you with coming on your favorite wrestling show he's not a kid that you know is promoting history or learning uh math and it just so happens he's overweight it's a family who promotes their children eating things and they are obese and let's reward that so this is the problem that i have with this company and that these people that criticize me for this can't seem to understand is that there can be things that you can stand up against and i know that these a lot of these wrestling fans they they love there's a huge crossover there with being attracted to men who dress like women. If that's your thing, you know, I don't care. Go do that on your own time. But when you start pushing it on kids, you're saying, this is awesome. Let's promote that. You know, I start to bring a problem, uh, have a problem with that. If you have a storyline, you know, that's a different story. They've done this in the WWE where they have the illegitimate son and everything. And, and, and racism and all these different things. But when you're celebrating a kid who's famous for being fat, essentially, that's why people celebrate this kid because he, he's fat and he's funny. When, when you reward children for that, I'm going to think it's stupid. And this is what I consistently see when I see things from AEW. I see their owner going out, or sorry, I don't know if Co Cody Rhodes is an owner anymore, going out, taking pictures with transgender people, uh, transgender flags, with children, I see CM Punk, who's been involved, you know, being like, oh, abortion rights and transgenderism, it's awesome. You know, he's saying that's awesome, and his wife's saying that all this stuff is awesome. Everything that I that makes my feed from AEW is something that's weird and gross. Now, if everything that made my feed from WWE was, you know, transgender this, obesity, obese kid that, um, or abortion this, Democrats rights, and if, if everything I saw from their fan base was, how dare you, you're a piece of shit, you should die, which is what they said to me, I would say, yeah, I hate that too, and you guys have a, have a weird problem. But what I see from AEW fans and the products that they put out is that they're a bunch of weirdos who think that wrestling is the most important thing in politics and culture. And then when somebody criticizes it, they say that they should die. That's because that's what makes you weird. So there's this weird crossover with the fans of this particular organization where they're really into guys that believe they're women. They're really into to weird gimmicky things that are unhealthy for people. They're really into sticking to their own, you know, their own team and propping each other up, even though they're, they act disgusting in a way where they would never approve that. If somebody went and sent death threats to a transgender person, they would say that that person's a piece of shit. You're harm. And that's what they said to me. They, they said you're harming transgender people, but at the same time, it's okay to send me death threats. It's interesting how that works. It's like, you know, in the sports world and a lot of sports media, nobody thinks, it's not as consequential in real life, you know, and I am a person who loves sports and video games and all this stuff, but it's not as consequential. So it doesn't receive the same criticism. So people get away with be with stupid progressive ideas that don't work in real life. They get away with pushing them in sports and video games and entertainment because it's not as critiqued. So that's what happens here is that they, they get hardcore progressives However, you want to say that they got to this point where they're supporting transgenderism in their own company and, you know, childhood obesity. 
these ideas aren't actually good, but they they stick together in this weird hive mind and say that they're good. And ever and if this happens in other sports, it would be like, you know, you've got the UFC, you've got one FC Bellator. It'd be like if if one FC had a guy beating up a girl and was promoting transgenderism and being like, hey, let's support these weird things, these weird ideas. I would criticize that too. It just so happens that a lot of this comes from the same fan base of one organization and they can't handle when people point it out and they don't understand that their ideas are defeated elsewhere. So when they come up, they come and say to a person like me, Hey, um, you're, you're garbage. How come you don't support? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything to me. You guys are stuck like 10 years ago. Look at your product. Just like the, the Democrats are having to do now, the leftists are having to do now. Look at your product, look at your idea and see why people think it's weird and when they criticize it, don't just be like, it must be because you're a piece of shit. That's what it comes to. But hey, maybe we are. Maybe we're the podcast of the POS podcast. Clip that if you want. Maybe this is the, what's the, what's the great podcast with the comedians? Are you garbage? Maybe that's the truth. But keep trying your ideas. Keep bringing the obese kid out. Keep celebrating the transgenderism. See if it works. I have a feeling that it's not working. A lot of people have that feeling that's not working. Write another Reddit post about me. It's okay. I forgive you. Jesus loves you. You know, Donald Trump loves you. And I rest my case. Unauthorizedopinions.com. UOPod.com. Patreon.com slash UOPod. We just released some of the recent Patreon videos after a few months. Interview with some hockey players on the Andrew Says YouTube channel. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. Go watch some Boy Meets World for Thanksgiving. It'll make you happy. Turn it up, Jordan.